Nicotine lovers, this is your addict in chief speaking, and I've got some advice today on how to quit the most addictive substance on earth. Cigarette. Stogies. That skinny, pale penis of God. There is a way that I've personally tested a few times throughout my life, and it involves daisy chaining down through less deadly alternatives until you're completely free altogether. The first step is to go from store brand cigarettes to something more natural like American spirits or cigarettes that you roll on your own. This works because as it turns out, some of the most addictive qualities of cigarettes come from their chemical additives. So if you remove those and just go back to straight tobacco, you've taken step one. Another strategy that helped me was to plan the number of times in your day you're actually gonna smoke a cigarette. When I first quit, I determined that I needed about six cigarettes to get me through a day without going insane. Commute, before commute, after commute, during lunch, before other commute, after other commute, end of day. I would pack those six cigarettes and not let myself have any more. And then every week after that, I'd cut one out. There goes end of day. There goes lunch. There goes before commute. I can have it after commute. So you move from six to five to four to three, and you give your body a long time to deal with the loss of that little reward that you'd built into your routine. You might even get yourself a little cigarette case like your Humphrey Bogart, so you can feel classy about the whole thing. And now that you're used to controlling your desires a little bit, Build up that groundswell of willpower and transition to vaping. You vape, bro? You guys vape? Hey, does anybody vape over here? Can we vape here? What flavor is your vape? I love cotton candy, bro. Give me some. I love you. According to most scientists, vaping eliminates the vast majority of health risks associated with smoking. Of course, this is still up for debate because if you haven't noticed, vaping came out of nowhere. Some people think it forms popcorn lung. Some people think chemicals like arsenic that can be found in it may have similar, if not worse, effects than cigarettes. But the vast majority believe that by not combusting tobacco, you are saving yourself a lot of death. I found that switching from smoking to vaping for a couple months helped me make the next step, which was Swedish schnur. That's good. Yeah, it's good. Little buzz. Huh? Avicii? Spotify? Meat cake? And Spotify and snooze. Just take one of these little things. It's like a little pouch. Pack it in your top lip. Kind of looks like you got punched and you're good to go. And a man named Michael Steinberg, director of tobacco dependence at Rutgers, admits that they're probably less harmful than cigarettes, which seems obvious, but for anybody doing tobacco research, that's about the best you're going to get in terms of a green light. Everybody's afraid to say any of these things are okay with you because they don't want to repeat the kind of Philip Morris lie machine that happened in the 1960s. Smoke a cigarette when you're doing exercise. There's absolutely nothing better for your health. Give your grandmother a cigarette when she's coughing up phlegm. Now, if you're anything like me, you might find that the snooze is actually a little more satisfying than a cigarette. When you're writing or doing something creative, it sort of draws out the buzz of a cigarette over an hour. You can have them in your mouth for an hour. And it also reduces that sort of Pavlovian cue and response that you get from pulling a cigarette to your mouth multiple times a day. And I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. If you can just leave something up there and forget about it, you're relaxed, but you're also not reinforcing the habit like 40 times every five minutes. The problem I find with snooze is that sometimes you forget you have it in there. I've fallen asleep a couple times with it in my lip. I just have sort of a dream where I'm eating a little bean. I wake up with a horrible wintergreen taste in my mouth, a bunch of shreds, and I'm not even much of a bean guy. A couple moments like that and you'll be ready to switch to the healthiest nicotine delivery mechanism, nicotine gum. Gum eliminates all of the social cost of nicotine addiction since it's not noticeable and it actually improves your breath. Some studies have linked the chewing of nicotine gum with increased short-term memory and lower risk of Parkinson's. Now, as far as we know, there are no negative health effects to nicotine on its own, aside from maybe an increased heart rate, similar to what you get with a cup of coffee. So you can go ahead and chew that gum for the rest of your days if you want. But if you're ready to get that nicotine monkey off your back entirely, I love you. Why don't you give me a kiss? Am I completely unscrewable yet? <laughs> Do you smell the bubble gum? Uh, yeah, it's not a bad idea to get that monkey off your back, huh? So in order to get rid of nicotine in general, we're gonna need another alternative, right? Because there's gonna be times in the day when you're gonna be tempted. For me, it's when other comedians are smoking after shows is why I researched hemp cigarettes. Look at that, a cigarette made of hemp. These little stogies have none of the addictive qualities of smoking cigarettes, but they mimic the mouthfeel and they allow you to take place in the ritual. Now, the nice thing about CBD is you're not just quitting cigarettes, you're also introducing something that has health benefits itself. We don't know exactly what. If you ask somebody who runs a CBD shop, they'll be like, yeah, it'll kill your depression and make you six feet tall. And uh, if you're a man, you can lactate if you want. And you'll be brave and you'll like waiting and you'll remember 
remember everybody's names and you'll be good at karaoke. For me personally, the effects of CBD are very subtle. I don't notice them any more than an Advil. But in order to participate in the ritual, I keep buying them. I'll go ahead and light one up now so you can see it. There's a special feeling to smoking something and not being sure you're going to die. I feel like James Dean if he lived to uh, 32. You do need an ashtray though. However, like with nicotine and snooze, there's still no definitive proof that these things aren't bad for you. I use this because I'm almost positive it's safer than cigarettes, and even if it's not, I don't have the same addictive pull that I would to cigarettes, so I'm smoking fewer of them. I smoke about a pack a month. There's no black and white solutions here, ladies and gentlemen, just informed decisions. But just to address the uh, lung cancer concern a little bit, I've done a lot of research on this, whether smoking weed, for instance, causes lung cancer. There has been no credible study linking the use of smoking cannabis or its sister hemp with lung cancer. And there's a few theories about why this is. One theory goes that it's the chemical additives to nicotine and cigarettes that actually do the damage to your lungs. The other theory is that the damage is being done. There's certainly tar in a hemp cigarette, but the cannabinoids and all of the things that come along with smoking marijuana or hemp actually mitigate that process. So it's like you're destroying something and rebuilding at the same time. Burning your arm and applying ointment punching somebody in the face while they're in a cryogenic chamber. That's the explanation that's most compelling to me, although it's clear that not all combustion is equal. Look, point is, before this video, I hadn't even smoked these in a week. They're not addictive, they're easy to kick. It's a good step when you're getting rid of nicotine altogether to when you have that craving, 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 you can still return to an old friend. But let's say you want a completely healthy alternative. At this point, you might be ready to make the big leap and say, I don't need any drug in me most of the day. I can just be myself. What is that like? Of course, I'm exaggerating. I have been completely sober at times in my life, aside from coffee. And the way I do that is by replacing them all with a healthy oral fixation. Drink tea, water, coffee, chew gum, chew on things. Eat healthy food constantly, gnarl pen, suck on sugar-free mints. Even liquid CBD is a great alternative with a few actual health benefits. Basically, when you pull the cord completely, have something in or near your mouth at all times. This will likely be your fate forever. There's a reason you smoke cigarettes in the first place. It's what Freud called the oral fixation. Basically, you got a lot of comfort from your mommy's teat, and as you're going through life, you're just looking for teats everywhere. You're a giant grown-up baby. I personally was breastfed very late, and that explains why I have so many of these crutches. You know you were breastfed too late if you remember it. My advice to you is to not fight this impulse, okay? My oral fixation is the reason I drink over a gallon of water every day. It can be channeled into something healthy. Don't fight the winds. Build a new sail. Come sail away, come sail away with me. And subscribe to this channel for more life hacks, documentaries about self-help, even some sketches thrown in there. All right? A little something for everybody. Thank you all for watching, and I wish you the best of luck. You got this.